Hi, I'm Gareth Kane and welcome to Ask Gareth. The idea here as always is very, very simple. You ask me questions about sustainability or corporate social responsibility and I do my best to answer them. The clue is in the name. And we've got another great question this time and it comes from Rory who asks, what is the most important group to work with to make sustainability irresistible? Is it the C-suite? Is it the green team? Who is it? Well, Rory, Thank you, another great question, and it's great because implicit in there is the first point I would have made if, if you hadn't implied it, which is it's not everybody. Far too many, but people make the mistake of uh, trying to engage every single person in sustainability, and as you have limited resources, you'll end up spreading yourself too thin. So we have to focus. So who is it going to be? My first point I'd like to make in terms of identifying groups is it's not you and it's not people who think like you as a sustainability professional. And this is very important because far too much engagement assumes that people will either think like you or they should be thinking like you. But here's a wake-up call, they don't and they may never think like you. Uh, if you're very successful, they might. So you've got to start thinking like those people and speaking in their language in order to engage with them and making uh, sustainability irresistible and that's the basis of my green jiu-jitsu approach to uh, engagement and it's all about and the jiu-jitsu bit is all about working to people's strengths seeing strengths as opportunity rather than a threat rather than trying to correct perceived weaknesses and it's absolutely crucial that you do that because you won't get very far with this sort of watered down green activist type approach to engagement Okay, if it's not you, if it's not the sustainability profession and not people who think like them, who is it? Well, the number one priority has to be the boardroom. You see, leadership is so important to sustainability that I wrote a book about it, The Green Executive. And, and why did I do that? Very simple, because at that point, uh, back in 2010, I realised from working with my clients that sustainability was sort of starting to plateau off a bit in organisations because it was a middle management uh, type activity. If you want to make the type of breakthrough changes required for true sustainability, you will need transformational leadership. Therefore, you need not just the, the buy-in, but drive from your boardroom. And that's pretty difficult, and you should be very careful about how you try and gauge the boardroom if they're sceptical. And generally, if they haven't thought of this themselves already, they will be sceptical about sustainability to a certain degree. They may pay lip service to it, uh, but there may be deeper scepticism. And my hint there is don't try and tell people why they should take sustainability seriously, but you should ask them why they should. Let those executives work it out for themselves. They're clever people, they know they're clever people, and they would far rather hear it from their own internal thought process rather than from you, because you're not in the boardroom, probably. Okay, uh, so we've got the boardroom. What's the, uh, the next group of people that you have to engage? And that depends from organisation to organisation, but it will inevitably be somebody in uh, middle to senior management positions and key decision makers. But it's not always, for example, in um, any uh, company with a design process in it, the actual designers will make a huge number of decisions on the, on the drawing table or CAD system or, um, these days, uh, but the metaphorical drawing board. And quite often they will design products the way they've already been always been designed and nobody will question that. So what you've got to do is get in and challenge those designers and designers always like a challenge to think differently and bring sustainability into the into the system. But what uh, that's just one example of course this varies from organization to organization and your job has to be to identify those decision makers that really really make a difference to the environmental footprint of your organisation. And as I say, they, it might be immediately obvious. Okay then, so the triple bottom line here is, you should focus your efforts on key decision makers, whether in the boardroom or other critical positions, but work to their strengths rather than trying to correct perceived weaknesses. Okay, Rory, that's my answer to your question. I'd like to open this up to everybody else. What, 
what do you think? Do you agree? Disagree? Have you got any examples or comments or, or, or counter arguments? Put it all in the comments below the video. I will answer every single question or comment that we get and it's always good to get a debate going. If you find this video useful then please do like it and share it with other people in your organisation or other people in your, your network of contacts uh, because we want to try and get sustainability going as widely as possible. If you'd like more of this sort of help um, make sure you go to www.terrainfirma.co.uk and sign up to the Low Carbon Agenda. That's my monthly uh, email newsletter. It's just past its 100th edition and um, if you subscribe to that you will get notification of every future edition of Ask Gareth and a whole load of other free stuff as well. And remember whether you're making incremental improvements to the environmental performance of your business or facilitating massive step changes towards sustainability, it all counts. You're making a world a better place and you should be proud of that. Until next time, goodbye.